Hi, I'm Joe. This is Hisella. Hi. And this is the Accidental yeah. Brewer channel. You know, the way we do things. So uh, today we're making something called a pumpkin mead. And we've already gotten two pumpkins uh, and boiled them and everything. I've got some footage of that already. Uh, they were pie pumpkins, they were very small. Uh, so this is what's left of the, uh, the mash and, and the boil. We boiled it for an hour after <clears throat> doing the uh, initial roasting. Uh, so it's, it was a fairly simple process. You take the seeds out, you cut the pie pumpkins into fourths. I used two, uh, put them in here, put uh, about 10 to 12 uh, all, all spice berries, three to four cloves, a stick of cinnamon, and uh, two cracked nutmegs. Make sure you crack the all spice berries also. You drop that in there with a pound of brown sugar, and then uh, you let it uh, boil for about an hour. Uh, then after it boils, it really simmers for an hour, uh, you set it to cool. So it's been cooling most of the afternoon. It's down to a cooled state, and we want to add our honey uh, to this. So we're going to use as our fermentation vessel a um, two gallon bucket because I think that's a little bit more than a gallon. I'm, actually, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's going to fill up enough of this that with the honey, it's going to be a fairly um, significant amount. So what I want to do first, I've got a scale here that's been sanitize and I know how much the bucket adds and everything and I'm going to add and see how much honey I'm adding. I believe it's going to be somewhere between two and three pounds. I think it's two and a half pounds. It may be closer to three uh, but we're going to see. I'm pretty sure there's still like a pound of honey and yeah it just went to two um, so and um, everything here has been sanitized we have a bucket that's just off screen it's full of sanitization um, fluid uh, we use star sand I had, to, I had to look behind me because I can't remember what star sand is but we use star sand um, and I just don't have enough room here to have it on the table and you actually be able to see us so um, it's like two point, it's like two pounds, two ounces of honey so far. So I think um, that's gonna be a pretty good amount. I am gonna take a little bit of this out. So this has been sanitized, as I said before. Uh, I even wiped down the outside of it, but it was sanitized on the inside because of the boiling. Um, so I'm gonna take some of this liquid out and I'm gonna put it in um, the, container with the honey and see if we can get a little bit more of the honey out but that's going to be right at about two two pounds five ounces uh, something like that so I just want to see if I can slosh it around in there and get the rest of it to come out so uh, this isn't this isn't super exact <laughs> uh, because you know uh, even though this is a recipe and oh I, I didn't mention this to begin with but uh, I got this recipe off of Alehorn, uh, which has a lot of really great recipes. Um, but I just was looking up pumpkin mead because it's that time of the year for pumpkin stuff. And I, I, I do, you know, growing up on a farm and everything that uh, I did, um, I just, I love pumpkins um, and I love pumpkin stuff. So I don't know, how do you feel about pumpkin Cicella? I don't know. You don't know? You never had any pumpkin no. stuff before? Never had any pumpkin stuff? Um, uh, I don't know. I think you have had pumpkin stuff before. You just didn't realize it. Maybe. 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 Okay. Maybe. All right. This is some very stringy liquid. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but we'll uh, re-sanitize that if you don't mind, please. I want to see if I can get some more of this honey out with this. I add a little aeration to the brew also. <laughs> Sorry. 
everyone just heard uh, probably the dishwasher starting back up. <laughs> um, always fun to have that happen right in the middle of doing this sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I don't know how much more of that we're going to get out, but got a little bit more. Not a terrible lot. That'll be enough. So. Okay, so here we are. We've got this in here. We've had a couple of interesting moments uh, where we, we blew up stuff or we got extra stuff in things or something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this strainer to hold back the goop that is down in here because it's very goopy. Uh, so Hisela, if you don't mind holding that for me for a moment. And I am going to get some liquid up in here so we can see how... Um, what are both our bricks and our um, gradient is. I'm, I'm not really sure what the gravity reading line is called. So, all right. Get a couple of these in here. Now this has all been sanitized, and even after where I used it before to see how much sugar was in there, um, or not how much sugar, to be able to pull some of the liquid out, um, we sanitized it again. So yeah, it's been sanitized. <laughs> it's been sanitized multiple times. Um, I've got a new tool I've never used before. It's a uh, bricks refractometer um, so that's supposed to be able to tell you fairly easily um, what your um, sugar content is and so I think we're at 1.14 so that is very interesting uh, we're gonna see if that's actually accurate. you can just set it down right there um, according to the bricks calculation. So if you don't mind sticking that back down in there so I can get some more liquid. I don't need nearly as much. Just enough to put on here and get the whole thing. Just need like a drop or two. There we go. As I spray that everywhere. And this is probably not going to be 100% accurate. But yep, it is pretty much the same by the light. It says it's 1.03, that says it's 1.014, 1 and this says it's, it's all, 1.1, it's above 1.13, so as high as this, this uh, refractometer goes. But uh, that may be the highest ABV thing I've ever made. I don't even know if this is going to work out the way that I want it to. That's a little high. I don't. The the yeast that we're going to use is EC one 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 yeast. So I think I'm going to actually add some more water to this to bring the ABV down. So the reason that I'm doing this is because I don't want to really stress this yeast out. And I found that if I throw too much um, stuff in there to begin with, too much sugar per volume, that it will stress the yeast out. So I'm trying to lower the volume of sugar by just a little bit to keep that from being a problem. And there we go. I imagine it's probably going to go down to about one. Uh, if it's 099 or one, this is good. But that also means that what I may do is just put the rest of this water in um, to get it up to about the two gallon mark and then make this into a two gallon brew and or see, see what I can get, like maybe split it between two and put different spices in it or something. I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay. Should be good enough. 
I like to go all the way to the top if I can because it's just a little easier for me, for me to read. Uh, no, it is. 1.1. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's fine. We'll leave it like it is. We'll see what ends up happening. Um, and we may back sweeten it a little bit or add a little bit more to it to make it raise the ABV. But this is where we'll set. I am going to try. I'm going to check the bricks one more time just to see if it um, is accurate to, or as close. I mean, we're talking about accuracies um, for home brewing, which really when it comes down to, <laughs> you step back to make sure I didn't splash you. Um, I'm just going to get a little bit more. Can't quite get enough water on here. So accuracies when it comes to home brewing are not perfect ever. All right, so it's saying that this is 1.095. And that's close enough to what I got earlier for me to say that 1.095 is good. Um, with we get some oxygen in here to help oxygenate it. Now, Hesela, if you would turn around from behind me and get the, um, the yeast holes, please. We're going to add some of those in here while I'm stirring this up. And then that packet of yeast that's right there. So like I said, we're using EC118, Walvin EC118 um, here. So I'd like to put a about two teaspoons, uh, so this one right here, of yeast holes in, please. And then pour that in here. All of it? Yep, just pour all of it in. Thank you very much. I will just finish stirring this up. Um, get it all in there. And, and the reason I'm doing yeast holes this time, every time I've ever done anything with fruit or anything like that, like the um, the last one that we did, the, um, the what, what was the mead that we did last time? Whatever the mead was that we did last time that I can't remember right now. Um, but that that mead, uh, the pie mint, that was it. The pie mint, the caps, caps camel, capsiscamel, and the pie mint. We, uh, you know, we did those, we put them together, they were brilliant, um, and they started off really strong, and um, the pie mint is just blowing out the airlock, so um, I'm a little concerned that that might happen here, so I've left a bit of headroom um, on this matrix cap down. I prefer to do this in glass, but uh, this is the only two gallon fermenter I have. So that's it. That is the end of this. Now we're we'll have a Patreon down down the the link below that uh, you can contribute to our community. Um, we'll give you some access to some very interesting content that we do on the side. Maybe I might put a camera up so you can watch my um, my bubblers bubble <laughs> in, in the middle of the day uh, or something like that. Give you a couple of extra Patreon only feeds and then uh, maybe ask us some questions uh, on the side about how we do what we do. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching and this has been The Accidental Brewer. We'll see you next time. <laughs> uh, my other daughter just walked downstairs. She saw that we were brewing <laughs> and recording and like walked backwards. Um, so, all right, so. We're going to pour all of this in here and oh there's a lot of splashing it's very gloppy oh that was a, that's a lot of splashing <laughs> all right so we're starting back up